What's up, guys? Uh, <clears throat> once again, I've been trying to make this for a couple days and just couldn't get there. I rehearse them over and over and over. And I, like, I'll walk around the house saying these out loud when I should be recording them, I think, but I don't know. Uh, before I even say anything, for my sister in Texas, never met you. Never spoke, but I believe you. Uh, I go through the same thing you go through. My logic starts to overtake my heart. And as soon as that happens, I start to get all jangly inside, I guess. That's the best way to describe it, like I'm off. And then it starts to turn to frustration, and then it turns into depression. And the reason, I believe, is because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And I know it's hard. Like it's so hard. Because nobody believes you. I just tried to talk to my friends the other day and I used the two sons as a segue before I even get to the God stuff. And they're like, she's looking at me like, are you sure you weren't seeing the moon? Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the moon. Anyway, I believe there's a verse, I wrote it down, it says, Verily, verily, I say in you, He that believeth on this works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Now, it also says, too, that he that resides in me, I reside in them. And I think that's why once our logic starts to dictate our heart, we get those side effects, the depression, the anger, because God is in us. And if we're not doing what He wants us to do, our soul feels it. But as soon as we get back to where we're supposed to be, <laughs> He takes it back away. Anyway, don't ever give up. I question it too, like, the day we saw the two sons, we were in a parking lot in a little shopping center. It was my girl and I and my two-year-old son, and we're hanging out of the truck, pointing at the sky, oohing and on and screaming and yelling, and not one person stopped to look. Not one. Now, it's either because they're blind, they don't care, or because we were the only people meant to see it. Which is what I believe it is. God shows His kids, His children, us, because we've been chosen for whatever reason to tell people. And I know it's hard when even your own family don't believe you. Believe me. But, If you tell them and they don't believe you at that time, maybe a couple days from there, week, month, they'll see something and they'll think about what you said. And that'll lead them to believe. So no matter what, don't ever, ever, ever give up or doubt yourself. <laughs> it sounds pretty arrogant, but when you really say it like, God chose me. It's a beautiful thing. The most beautiful thing. I got tears in my eyes already. Uh, I'm glad that what I posted helped. <laughs> what you said about the sevens, the day after I posted it, I said in the video, I'm making this to qualify. My girl found this saying, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. What are the odds? The day after I made that, I finally got a post and that's what she gives to me. I mean, it, it's just too much. I wanted to make this video happy and bubbly and more about how much she loves us. But, uh, I don't think that's what he wants me to say right now.
I think what he wants me to talk about is what really is happening. And how, well, how hard it is. See, I'm ch my mind's changing. I wanted to share that it's hard to tell people because they don't believe you. But at the same time, we have to sacrifice something. And I'm having a hard time because the thing he wants me to sacrifice is my family. It's hard for me to balance making money to take care of the bills that I have and my family and this. My phone bill, because this is how I do everything, is astronomical. But I also know that when the time comes to pay the bill, he will provide it. Especially if I'm doing what he wants me to do. If I'm doing it wrong, then it's on me. But I really feel like this is what he wants. So when the time comes to pay it, it will be paid. I have no doubt about it. The rest of the stuff... A couple weeks ago, I'm going to make a video about it eventually. I don't know if I should because it involves my family. And as of right now, my family is already in danger. We're being followed. I'm pretty sure my phone is not right. Uh, I know I'm being followed. I've always had the instinct, especially when I was in the criminal lifestyle, when somebody was trying to do me harm, set me up with a cop, anything. I am being followed. <coughs> Liz has three boys. Her middle son is Nevin. Extremely articulate, smart little dude. One of the smartest, coolest little kids. They went to Turkey Hill one night with their mother and some black car pulled in and the guy got out and when he saw him, the only description this kid could come up with is, Ugh! Scared him to death. Now, I know that one day I'm going to lay down my life for this, which is fine. I've come to rest with that, peace with that. My family makes me want to retaliate which is really hard not to do because that's not what he wants me to do. I drive around all day talking into my phone. Here I go, I'm going home guys, come on, here we go, I'm going here. Telling them, you're serving the wrong master and you're going to lose, it's destined and I hope you know you're going to burn. Sometimes I like get a little out of control, I got a mouth on me still. I constantly ask him to help me with it. I stop blaspheming his name, I don't say all my anything. When I hear somebody else say it, I cringe. But my mouth, I'm like a sailor. Like, phew, it's so bad. And I constantly ask him, please help me with this. I want my smoke, because I smoke like a fiend. Every time I ask him, all I think is about Paul. And he asked him three times to remove the thorn in his side. And Jesus told him, my grace is sufficient. So, I hope I'm not using it as an excuse to keep cursing and smoking. Like, that's just what I get. Uh... Two weeks ago, when it originally happened to me, when I saw heaven, I was working at that rehab after that. This girl wigged out. I had started just as janitorial. And then janitorial RT, and then they were going to pay for my school and all that, and I screwed it all up. Anyway, this girl, that as soon as she got there, I, there was just something about her. Every time I saw her, I just... My heart ached almost, like I needed to talk to her. And uh, I was in the main, the detox part, cleaning her one day, and this girl just snapped, wig right out, whew, off the deep end. Shoving dressers against the door, put her hand through the window, salt and staff, and they made us, everybody leave, including me. Now I get outside, and I go sit on this wall, and the sky opened up, and this beam of heaven, or sun, hit me. And I heard in my head, as clear as day, go, you can help her. Because after it happened, I saw the bad in people, the demons. And I knew that that's what he wanted me to do. But I, I thought, if I walk into that room and go up to her, put my hand on her, and start speaking the Holy Spirit, they're going to throw me out or look at me like I'm nuts. 
But at the same time, if I would have did it, it would have worked. I know it would have worked. I think about it to this day, constantly. And I didn't. And I heard him clear as day, man. Go, you can help her. And I didn't. And I think that was the start of me going backwards. Now, society teaches us, even Christians, you ask a Christian to believe in Jesus? Yeah. Believe in demons? Demons are fake. What? Demons are real. Like, how could you even say you believe in Jesus Christ, but you don't believe in demons? It's That's all he did, constantly, casting demons out. Now, I know I'm going to sound nuts here, but whatever. Two weeks ago, it came to the point where I was going back and forth. I knew what I saw. I knew what I was feeling. But it was still iffy. I was still putting other people my girlfriend and my child, and my unbelief, my doubt, first. Well, he made it so that either I stepped up and did what I was supposed to do, or I'd have been in prison right now for the rest of my life. 